Okay, Max, this week. It's the bottom 25%. So I want you to think that maybe the top 25% are the Lambo. The bottom 25% are my Infinity. It's eight, nine years old, does pretty decent, but it's not the baddest ass thing ever. And so when I was looking at this, I was actually digging through some stats because I'm trying to figure out some trainings to the importance of different aspects. So let me show you this, it'll be easier to write out. So in here, we're judging three things. There's three things that have three separate components. The first item is gonna be how they opt in. The second item is going to be the effectiveness of each place they opt in. So when I look at it, there's three ways you can get people to join a marketing program in our case. In store, online, and social. The second component of this is the type of customer. Is new, frequent, and lost. So when we look at this, I was trying to analyze and understand what the differentiator is. So in store, typically 45 to 65% of the people. So if we acquire somebody online, 45 to 65%, basically half, will walk their butt into the restaurant. Online, it's typically 30 to 35%, which makes sense because the person might be window shopping, but they found your website, looking at the menu, directions, hours. Hell, they might be in your restaurant and scanned a QR code in your restaurant to go look at your menu and landed here. And the last part, is social. So 10 to 15, it's actually about 12%, I think is an average on a lot of them. So here's what I found happened. As I'm looking at our clients, our lowest 25% have basically, for whatever reason, decided they don't give a shit about the people in the restaurant. Website is average, half are doing it, half are not. But still, it's, we'll kind of just say, you know, one-tenth of an effort. Up here, social media, we control. So we are doing everything possible organically and paid to get people there. Here's the other element. The more people you find on social, you find more new people. You can get a frequent customer in at about 30% clip. Lost customer in at about a 20% clip. And a new customer in at about a 10%. So it's three times more effective or easier to get a frequent customer back. So many of our clients are heavy here. Across the board of all of our clients, their traffic is coming from us, which is coming from social media. What's crazy about that is that one thing I heard recently was a guy's like, hey, I'm not doing my in-store because those people are already coming. Well, we've been surveying also some of our clients who are doing the in-store. And we found that about 60 to 70% of the people opting in in-store are new or lost. They're not even frequent. But for whatever reason, there's 60 to 70% are falling in here. And they are, in this case, if they're already in, we know they're four times more likely to come back. So a new customer we find in-store is way different than a new customer we found on social media. Make sense? I think now we're off to, what, uh, see Andrea Spigen up at European Cafe, shooting an episode of ABR. Maybe we'll talk to her about this stuff. Who knows, maybe she'll be bored. We're out.
<laughs> live and live and direct. Hey. I'm usually behind the camera, not in the front of it. Next BBQ, I love barbecue. Like brisket, burnt uh, ends. Wagyu brisket, pork belly, Damn, pork wagyu belly brisket. Sandwich, you got a pork yeah. belly breakfast sandwich. Uh, we do uh, smoked chicken thighs. Um, the ladies call me smoked chicken thighs. Right? <laughs> Yeah, we do. Why is that? You two stay in here. We'll come out with me. Oh, yeah. I gotta get it. Here's hop on in. The van? No. Uh, here's one. Here. This is pretty. This is pretty luxe, man. Oh, oh, this is so hard. Express real quick. Welcome. Yeah. Andrew, welcome. Have you seen an episode? Yep. I'm excited to be part. Matt kind of gave you the whole spiel of what we're doing and everything. Exactly. All right. I'm so in. I'll just kind of walk you through what the process looks like for today. Okay. All right. So this is our pre-shoot meeting here. We're just kind of, you know, going over the whole thing, but more in detail. What we'll do is we'll come out. Austin's filming the three things that we're going to sit down and talk about. Uh, we restructured a little bit, so we'll sit down. I'll say, all right, guys, we're back inside. I'll ask you a couple of questions. How'd you get started in the restaurant industry? How you got started here? Um, and then we'll dive into our menu items where we'll talk about those. And then we'll plug in at the end how people can find you social media, website, you want to throw an address in there, uh, phone number, whatever you want to do. And Got then I'll it. also mention that you have a full listing right here on America's Best Restaurants. Excellent. So you know what you would say, how you got into the restaurant industry? It, it was not planned at all. Right. Not at all. So we started uh, in 14 at another coffee shop, which we purchased on a total whim and we sealed the deal on a Friday night, and Saturday morning we were business operators. That's it Brian Shell. That much planning, you got it. I had no idea. Tom had never pulled a shot of espresso. I had. To, I was just like, all right, why not? So you and I are similar. We plan. We just jump. Oh yeah, we build the airplane on the yeah. way down, man. So I'm very fortunate that I am partnered with somebody that talks to everybody and is not afraid to talk to everybody. And he, the owner of this space. Uh, He'd always bump into her and always say, are you ready to sell? Are you ready to sell? And one day he caught her and she said, yep, I'm ready. So uh, we just reopened June of 21. Wow. So yeah. Eight, eight months? Yep. Actually, we had it for almost two years before we reopened because we bought wow. it in July of 19. Wow. Wow. Yep. Yeah. Well, so, is, is the name the same? The name is the same. We okay. kept the name and rebranded the entire restaurant. I didn't want to be x restaurant you know the place where the old european cafe used to be because it's been the european cafe for almost 30 years okay so they weren't a coffee shop or anything before no or? it was more like a greek greasy spoon okay yeah nice. no and greasy spoon in there now there's no grease <laughs> there's no grease no. <laughs> yeah, i don't do grease <laughs> and i think matt talked to you about a couple of the opportunities already that we have yes. with america's best restaurants yes. all right no? I'm psyched. You ready to do I'm it? I'm ready. Let's go make I'm an episode. Let's do it. All Everything. right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I want that grilled cheese. Oh, that, that short rib? Yep. Camera yeah. hey, back there. We got Max. Are you filming me, filming you? Filming you, filming him. Isn't that a song? Me? Filming, what is that one song? Uh, feeling you, feeling me. Yep, yep. And that's what's happening right now. There we go. We got his camera. We got the whole team. We got Sierra. First day on the job. First day. What's up, everybody? I've known this guy since he was like that big. Now he's the biggest thing. Uh, yeah. The behind the scenes. Some of the Dominican Republic. We're staying in this real bougie, high end resort. We have like we're on the ocean. We have our own little pool. You all is badass. It was during COVID. We got it cheap as shit. That's why we went. That's how I roll. And so we're there, and our butler every morning would bring. Dominican coffee. And it yeah. was delicious. Well, that night we're at dinner. My friend, ironically, because I have friends everywhere, he lives in Dominican. He drives like six yeah, hours of the over there. So he comes, he's at dinner with me and my wife. You heard this? No. So he's at dinner with me and my wife. And I said, hey, can I get a coffee? Well, I didn't know that everywhere else on the property when you ordered a coffee, it was American coffee, AKA espresso. So she brings out after dinner this cup of coffee. It's like this much coffee. I'm like, no, can you fill this up? And she looks at me confused. And so Jonathan in Spanish tells her, bum, 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 bum. five minutes later, it comes out. It's just giant cup of coffee. And I'm like, okay, it's strong, whatever. So then my wife goes back to the, the room good. and me and Jonathan go to the bar. And I don't drink. So while he's drinking his fancy like Moscow mules or something, I'm like, hey, give me another one of those coffees. So 
three more within the next hour. Oh, wow. so, so it's like 4 a.m. and I'm in the room and I'm on my laptop working away. My wife's like, what are you doing? I'm, I'm good, I'm good. I'm working like people believe, right? So I, I wake up the next morning like 6.37, I'm beat. I get up and I walk up to that little cafe they had. And I look at the menu as the first time I'd been in there because I had just been drinking coffee and butler on us. I guess it was too early for that. So I walk up and I look and it says, Dominican coffee, this much. And then it says, uh, American coffee, parentheses, espresso. Oh, oh. So I call Jonathan. I'm like, hey, what was I drinking last night? He's like, dude, you crushed like 20 espressos. And I'm like, you knew the cups were full of espresso? Like, yeah, I thought you knew. I'm like, I thought it was coffee. Yeah, so he, we, had, we came back with four full cups of espresso. <laughs> I, got a lot, I, I got a lot of work done. Okay, so the theme this week is talking about the value of where you capture people's data. So we're inside European Cafe right now. We're inside, actually, we're going to get Andrea. Hey, hey Andrea. Yes, so the theme of my video this week is about conversion rates. Okay. So tell me if this makes sense to you. So we've seen there's three places we help restaurants capture data. In store, four walls, which makes sense. People are walking in. Second's website. Third is social media. Right now, we're in the process of tweaking what we offer our clients because not many have ever taken advantage of the four walls and the website. Okay. They're leaning on us. Hey, find me people on Facebook and Instagram. I just literally dug the last two weeks into thousands of pieces of data. 12 and a half to 15% of people basically come into the restaurant's database and the restaurant gives them an irresistible offer. 12 and a half to 15% of them will walk in the restaurant within 45 days. So it means 100 people, 12.5, you know, 15 people walk in. People that are captured through the website, which means they're looking at what you offer, they're much better prospect, not as sure. cold, 25 to 35%. In store, 45 to 65. So meaning 100 people walk in here, mm -hmm. if you correctly capture their data and give them something badass to come back, five out of 10 will come back. Will come back. And okay. here's the funny part. Sense. So here's the argument and, and answer this for me. So I hear a lot of times from people like, oh, people are already in my restaurant. They're gonna come back. Right. They know, like, and trust me. We found that 60 to 70% of the people that our customers are capturing in their restaurant, we ask them a question on the front end. How often do you come to European Cafe? Never been, they're brand new, every week, frequent. I haven't been in a long time, lost. 70% of the people answer the question, new or lost. Huh. So I mean, if 100 people walk, now you might be a little different because yeah, we're located. And we're weird because we just yeah. literally open. Opened, right? But if you imagine 70% of most restaurants, people that walk in, Right. Are either brand new, because one time, a lot of times they're with a friend. Friend brings them a lunch. Sure. They never been. And then other people hadn't been in a while because different, you know, they drive by, they haven't driven by in a while, haven't right. seen your advertising, whatever. So we ha we do actually have a database of all of our customers that. Through the credit card. Through the credit card. Yep. And I have access to that entire thing through Square, and I can do an email or a text blast message to them yep. through Square. So they make that super easy. I haven't done it yet. Yep. Well, and there's, there's two elements to that. One, when somebody gives you their data versus mm -hmm. it coming on accident, sure. it's much stickier. Like if you say, Matt, you want a free waffle next time? And I go, hell yeah. And you give me a free waffle. Right. Right. I'm more inclined to come back. Whereas if I put my credit card in, the email comes through Square. Yeah. I didn't really say, here's my email. Right. I'm not expecting anything. Right. It, it is a little creepy. Yeah. It's very creepy. Kind of feel a little like stalker-ish. Yeah. And customers will say, oh my gosh, my phone number popped up or oh my gosh, I just got a text receipt or yeah. an email receipt. And we have to explain to them that they've entered their information somewhere else that uses Square, but it's the same platform. So yeah. that's why they're getting it. I'll, I'll get your advice on it when it goes live, but we're launching eight six week modules that teach okay. restaurants how in six week periods to implement different aspects. The first six weeks is how to get customer data how to have conversations when somebody's at the register mm -hmm. and say, hey, dumb question of the day, because you want a free waffle your next visit, because you don't yeah. need it now. Right. And you have some item that's a low-hanging fruit that somebody is irresistible. Yeah, hell yeah, I want a free waffle, cool. Scan this code, it's gonna ask you five questions, name, phone number, email, we won't ever spam you, you can opt any time, but you're gonna get something awesome sent to you. Right. And that's what I'm trying to get restaurants to take a hold of, because sure. right now, a lot of restaurants, they walk in, it's a transaction. And like, you guys have fun, you guys, I see how you handle business, everybody's sure. family, right. but, if you can get more people that information that never been in here, sure, get them to sure, come sure. back yeah, 10, 20, 30 sure. times. Right, and see, we operate a little. I mean, we're definitely the true mom and pop yeah. owner operator. We're here every day. Yep. You know, we touch every customer in an appropriate way. <laughs>
<laughs> dun, dun, dun. <laughs> you knew that was coming. Yeah, you knew that was coming. Yeah, so you know what I mean. Yeah. We, we make sure that they know that we are grateful that they yep. are here. Now the next goal is to figure out how to politely get their data. That's right. And then correctly tell them how to come back more often. That's right. I can't wait to dig into this grilled cheese sandwich. I said that's the Barry Bonds of grilled cheese. It's on steroids. Yes, yeah, so there's the, there's the theme of the week. And it's wild because look, this is people we captured through messenger ads. So this is social media. And by the way, this is a, a live client stats. They've gotten the database of 18,460 people's data in a year and a half. Look at this, 11,473 birthdays. That's a shitload of birthdays in a year. So that, that's 11, almost 11,500 people who you can invite in. If you get a third of those people, the revenue is enormous. But 12,955 people that opted in through Messenger drove 2,800 front-end redemptions. Whereas on their website, 1,917 opt-ins led to 846 redemptions. And 70% of those people told us they were new or lost, meaning they hadn't been or they hadn't been in a while. And so the argument of, oh, they're already in my four walls, they're gonna come back, doesn't hold water because that new or lost customer may not come back if they don't get invited enough and have enough awareness. So that's the theme of this week's video. Opportunity. Opportunity. Baby. Happy birthday to you. Cha ching baby. Happy birthday to the old man. Cha ching cha ching cha ching. You got I think you need like 72 more cha chings. Cha ching ching cha ching cha ching. Happy birthday to you, Dad. Yeah. Fire with Dad. Birthday edition. Cha ching baby. I love it. Happy birthday. Thanks for the gift. Let's be honest. I'm a straight shooter. You know, if you get cigars, it's from me. Exactly. I know I didn't even this in a cigar if, shop. If it's not cigars, it's from Christy. Actually, I was kind of surprised when I opened it up. I thought, where the hell are the cigars? And I thought, oh, that's I'm even better. So now because, oh, so you're saying Christy's gift was better than mine? No. So it's fire with dad. Fire with dad, baby. You know what? I got to say that the Argyle sweater old guy jacket looks pretty good with the orange MP shirt. Yep. And it's even got a who, a who day look. Who day look? I know. What about that, man? The bagels finally don't suck. That's right. I went to the Silver Dome, froze my cattooties off. What's a cattootie? Uh, your butt. Oh, okay. Cattootie, baby. And uh, that was that. That was wild because it, it was just 50 degrees below zero at wind chill. But uh, we didn't go to Miami when Boomer was playing. But now I, I tell you what, they, they they may have the best team they've ever had this, this weekend. The Burrow's unbelievable. He looks like he's 12 years old. I know. I love it. <laughs> but I love his attitude. I grew up a Bears fan, and then at some point in college, I became a Bengals fan. And then in my 30s, I realized that the Bengals were run by a disaster of an ownership group, Mike Brown and his kids. And I mean, it's just a numbers game, I'm guessing, in the NFL, that you're going to suck for 30 years and have some hype views in there and make it. But my friends that stuck with this crap, it's beyond me. I mean, that's literally like going to a restaurant and the food sucks for two, three years. It's just bad food. And then it's, oh. Yeah, not bad. Pretty good. They got a new chef. And then, like, one year, it's like, oh, my God, this is great. And then you get to the end of the season, you're like, oh, my God, what's wrong with this? That doesn't taste good. And then it tastes like crap for the next couple of years, and then it's good, and then it's bad. But here we are. You it's finally fantastic. got a good, It's fantastic right now. If you've got a great football team or even a great baseball team, amazing what it does to the local economy. I, I was reading an article last week at the economy in Cincinnati. The, the numbers were astronomical through the roof. All of a sudden, the restaurants are packed. Everybody's got a positive attitude, right. and all of a sudden the economy is booming. So, kind of a who day, baby. Yeah, I've got all sorts of people. Every time I talk to people on the phone this week, like, hey, congrats. I'm like, oh, I'm not a Bengals fan. They're like, oh. I'm like, but I am a fan of my hometown, and I'm a fan of all my friends whose businesses are doing well, and my friends who unfortunately are still Bengals fans. I'm well, a fan I'm, I'm somewhat a Bengal fan when I'm not rooting for the oh, Bears. Oh, bull crap. No, you're not pulling that crap again. Mr. I'm a UK fan. Oh, but I'm also a Louisville fan. Oh, now you're a Bear. You're a Bengals fan that they're in the Super Bowl, huh? It's right, baby. You're the complete fan. I, I'm going to call Fairweather, Fairweather fan. I've never now. heard you cheer for the Bengals like in one time. <laughs> so what else is going on in the world of Dwayne Plappisms? Not much. I, 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 I did a thing this morning for about two or three minutes or on, <laughs> <laughs> on my networking group. I kind of stole one of your things. Oh. 
uh, the blue ocean and the red ocean. Yeah, it's, it's, and it's my, my, my comment was, uh, what are you doing to stand out? What are you doing different? If you're, if you're in the red ocean, you're like everybody else, the sharks are going after you, and every, you, you're just kind of you fit You're in, killing each other. Yeah, you're killing each other. Where if you're in the blue ocean, you're doing things that nobody else is doing, and you're all by yourself, you've got great innovations, and that's the key how you make it. If you notice the guys that all make it in business. It's not because they're doing the same thing everybody else is doing. They're doing something different that makes them stand out. I mean, how many businesses do you know they have a podcast studio in? Like, you look out in the lobby, you walk in. Uh, we just, we launched, this is Deep Work Studios podcast room, and we just launched that division of our company to help us market better. And we're also helping a few local companies like Rising Star Casino is going to be doing a podcast in this very room. And that was what I talked to them about was you can be like the other casinos. And buy the same crap radio ads, TV, direct mail, same type of promotions, or you can stand out. And what you do to stand out, it makes you different, yeah. which makes you successful. And if you haven't heard the analogy, red ocean, blue ocean, the concept is that the red ocean, the, the sharks are feeding there. Like that's where everybody's playing, that's why there's blood in the water. The blue ocean is where nobody's at. And sometimes going to the blue ocean uh, is the wrong play because there's a reason maybe nobody's there. Uh, you know, there's certain industries and certain business ideas that might not be. But from a marketing standpoint, you know, I was talking to a client the other day about blue ocean things. I said, one, you're a restaurant. Why aren't you hosting a podcast in your bar? You got a hundred beer taps of beer behind you. You could be talking about a different beer every week. Customers would tune in and would give you very unique content. Bring in a different brewmaster. Bring well, in a customer. The same thing we did in our retail store. We did things that nobody else did. I want mistakes so that I can get to the right thing. That's how you learn, as long as you don't make the same mistake over and over again. The key is, okay. You mean like it, most it, of the professional athletes? Yeah, big time. It, it's trial and error in, in life. I mean, you know, that's the way, that's way life is, but that's how you learn. And, and you know, I, I used to do a lot of speaking when I was uh, younger uh, with the JCs, and I, my speech was called, Life is the Opportunity to Fail. And the only way you get ahead is you've got to be willing to take the risk to fail. And if you're not willing to take the risk to fail, go stand in the closet, baby. Cha-ching, baby. Cool, we're out. Fire with Dad. Cha-ching. Happy birthday. <laughs> Make up your mind. <laughs> See y'all. See you next week. Bye. Right, two weeks. I'm gone next week. See you two weeks. Oh, yeah? Yep. Bye. Okay. You're out of here. So you're just going to come, be on TV, and leave. Like, you well, want to get dominated on Facebook again? What happened with you and Logan? It was 20, 20, 20, 20, 21 to 18 or something like that. I thought you guys played twice. No, played once. On just once? We played twice today, though. You did? Who, you and him? Score was pretty close at the same time. And then we focus on these six-week challenges of teaching restaurant operators and managers like you how to put in place initiatives. So like the first challenge is in-store opt-ins. How do we get people in the restaurant to give us their data? Because right now, nationwide, with our, our stats, only 3% of restaurants nationwide are asking customers inside the restaurant for their data. That's what the six week challenge starts with. The reason we pick six weeks, and it's kind of funny because I took this, I own a, I'm partners in a gym. And the gym, we found that when people join for a one year membership, it's hard to look a year down the road and see, I lost an inch from my way. It, they, they just can't picture a year down the road. But when they come in and say, hey, you're here for a six week weight loss challenge, we're gonna help you lose 20 pounds in six weeks based on you know, per percentage of your body fat. And then maybe you're 300 pounds and you wanna get to two, 260, we're gonna help you get to 20 pounds that go on the next six weeks. So you see, the light at the end of the tunnel. And it works great because people come in and when they commit to going to the gym, eating a little better uh, and doing some of the different things every week, all you gotta really do is work out every week. And if you work out every week and you haven't worked out, in six weeks, you're gonna be in a better place. On the restaurant side, we've identified eight modules. The first one uh, is the in-store opt-in and website opt-in. The website's not hard, it's a tool. The in-store is actually takes an effort. And so we've, we realized that it takes people 30 days to create a habit. That in six weeks, you're going to grow your database upwards of 3,500 people through online, social, and in-store. And it's gonna drive 2,000 visits. And I'll, I'll email you a couple of days and times right now. And that way uh, you can get with them and we can get together later this week, early next week, and walk through it all and go from there. Okay, awesome. Yes, I will uh, talk to them and then figure out a date and time based on that and get back to you. Cool. Sounds great. Bye. Bye-bye. Dude, you, you should see their website. It's the food, the photography. I mean, look at this. So if you go to the website, like this is the menu page. I mean, 
I mean, get in my belly. They've got great photography. Yeah, that's legit. I mean, that's a great picture. It's like a food network. I mean, look at that. Yeah. Like, how in the hell would you not want to eat there? Yeah. So then you go to the nice. then you go to Facebook. And exactly what she said. Like, the managers have been thrust into being the social media person. They don't have the training. You go to the Facebook. It's a Mardi Gras post. It's Valentine's. I mean, like that should have. Forget the Valentine's menu. Yeah. Put pictures of people having Valentine's. It doesn't reflect the website. And then on, you know, on the website, this is the opt-in down here. Join our email list. And when I go on here, it asks my email, phone number, birthday. I got nothing. And so that's a huge element. That's a, that's a big thing you've got to have. That You've got to have that automation built out yeah. so that you can have those conversations correctly and automatically because you gotta, you got to have systems in place to really do that. It's all about believing the path you're on and sticking with it, the consistency. About 10 years ago, I started working out. And I remember the first month, the second month, the third month, thinking, when's it going to change? When's it going to change? But the guy at the gym said a good comment. He's like, Matt, you didn't gain the 30 pounds of fat in six months. You aren't going to lose it in six months. It took you 10 years of poor choices to get to this point. And so that's what I look at when I look at marketing. That's one of the problems that we run across with a lot of small businesses, specifically independent restaurants. They've never stuck with anything like that for a long period of time. It's three months here, six months here, nine months here, two months here, a month here. They never sit back and look at something and say, the next two years, I'm going to gain mass attention. And when I gain mass attention the next two years, I'm going to stack attention and stack and stack and stack. I was explaining this to a friend the other day. I said, you know, if your business reaches 1,000 people a month right now, and in six months you're reaching 10,000 people a month, and in a year you're reaching 20,000 people a month, now you turn that reach into impressions because you reach them more frequently. You go from reaching those 20,000 people once to reaching them 10. It happens. The problem is businesses have a hard time sticking with that. They want to see something tomorrow. You can go to the gym right now. If you've, you know, if you've gained massive weight, yeah, you might see some results. You might see a pound or two shut off. But for the most part, if you go to the gym consistently for the next week and you weigh in and you look at your belt size, not a lot's going to change. Not a lot's going to change next month, the month after that. But if you do it for two or three years, that's what it was with me. After six to eight months, I started to see little changes. It was really in that 24 to 36 month window when I saw abs again. Well, I look at that the same with restaurants. You're not gonna see the massive sales increase right away. Anything that gives you a massive pop in the front end is gonna have a poison at the end. I remember the Groupon days. Restaurants were flocking to do Groupons. They were doing you know, 2,500 gift cards in 24 hours. I was involved in a bunch of these with clients early on. And then you realized it was empty because it was a shot in the arm for a couple weeks and then it was gone in six months. You've got to be willing to stick with the commitment that, hey, I know it's not rocket science. If my restaurant reaches 10,000 people 10 times a week, it's 100,000 people. If I do that consistently over the next two years, I either grow or I don't grow. And if I don't grow, I have a deeper problem. My product, my service, my atmosphere, my location might be terrible. But if you have good, good food, you have good service, you have good atmosphere. I'm not saying great, I'm saying good because consumers eat out a lot. We have a custom to like good. We don't expect amazing everywhere. I tell my son all the time, like, hey, you're not gonna love every meal, but you're gonna, have a, a full stomach. So if you have good food, good atmosphere, good service, it's simply a matter of reaching more people on a more consistent basis and you gotta stick with it.